shapes your body. So this uh, lady whose hand is so much deformed, she came and knocked the door in the morning, and my God, he opened. Uh, like uh, we in Ethiopia, we have big these big gates. Like it's not like the, here in uh, America. I see lo lots of you guys doesn't have a fence, a big fence or something. In Ethiopia, we have a big fence. I don't know why. So <laughs> she come and knock, and then my God opens the door, and then. You know, as a normal person, he just, you know, in Ethiopia, we greet people hand to hand, you know, we kiss each other, we, uh, we do shoulder, sh uh, shoulder to shoulder greetings, and then uh, he comes and then he opens the door and then he says, hi. And when he greets her, her hand is like this, she is affected by leprosy, immediately my dad reacted and put his hand together at his back and ran away to the bathroom uh, to, uh, to wash his hands. And he got a soap and wash himself because he touched a third person. My God was another first person. Now he's changed. Now he loves her people too. He greets them. But he wasn't the first person. Pe the people that are rejected by people. The people rejected by because of the cut. People rejected by who they are. People rejected by their personality. People are rejected by their sickness. When they come to Jesus, Jesus restores them and then brings them back to the society. That's what happened in the life of that a leprosy affected person. So for me, this is one of the reasons that surely he is the son of God. Because there is no stigma in the ministry of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, Jesus never, he, do, he doesn't have an isolation policy. Jesus is a people person. Jesus loves people. If you have sickness, if you have in whatever lifestyle, if you have in whatever situation, one thing I know is Jesus loves you because indeed he is surely the Son of God. And also, when we talk about extraordinary miracles, one of the things that strikes me always is in um, John, the, in the Gospel of John, John chapter 2. I hope and believe most of you are so much familiar with this about the wedding. And here, Jesus is in a place where he is invited. There is a big feast, there is a big celebration. It's a time of joy. Because some couple are getting married. And it, there is a big party. In the midst of the big party, something happened. There was a shortage of wine. The wine was almost over. So the mother of Jesus, she came out to Jesus and she says, Son, look. The wine is over, and I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are God because I know that you are conceived because of the Holy Spirit. I know Joseph is your stepfather. He's not your biological father. I know you are God. So I want you to do something. I want you to do a miracle today in this way. Then Jesus, what he had done was... He, 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 he asked the people to fill the empty jars with the water. And then he, he changed the water into the best ever wine. I don't know which wine in America is the best wine. But that was what, what Jesus after. He transformed the water, a pure water. I've been on the springs here, like, oh, I was, where have we been? Big springs. Huh? Big springs. Big springs. I've been there. Jesus literally changed the big spring water into the best wine. And the people so much are mad. They say, this is the best wine. How you bring this best wine, like, at such a time, you should bring it before. Jesus 
Jesus from the thing that looks impossible in the eyes of men, in the eyes of whom? God, my God, my Jesus, has transformed it. Give it beauty. Give it pets. He gave it pets. And people are amazed. For me, yes, indeed, Jesus is surely the Son of God. Because no man has done, no man has have ever attempted to, to transform, to change the water into a wine. Unless he is Jesus. <coughs> and also when we talk about healing, I see in I see in Mark 2 and Matthew chapter 8. In Mark 2, from verse 1 onwards, if you are going to, you can go and read by yourself, there was one paralyzed man. He can't walk. For all his lifetime, he was a disabled person. From birth onwards, he can't walk. He can't, people are the one who was moving him around. But this guy, his friends, they decide for the healing of this friend of uh, uh, this, or this, of their friend. And then they brought him, and even, I, it always, when I read that scripture, it surprised me, it, I, I used to get wonder, because they, without a permission of the owner of the house, they go on the top of the roof, and then dig the roof, and then what they do is, as Jesus was talking over there, they brought down the sick person, the paralyzed person, and then they say, Jesus, we want you to heal. And maybe some of us, like, you know, some, some people here, if, or not here in Ethiopia, what I have observed is, if, if you want to go to, uh, like, to see a doctor, you need to have an appointment. You have to go. And you say, I want to come this day, and he will give you, sometimes, like, not on the basis of the day that you want, on the basis of the, the day that you want, on his free time. You, you're going to be scheduled, then you're going to go. And then, see your doctor. Or, uh, our pastors, uh, I am part of it sometimes, and, uh, you know, like, when people want to meet us for prayer or something, we call and we say, um, uh, I can't now. I have some uh, time with my family. I have some time uh, playing golf. I'm sometimes, uh, uh, you know, doing this and that. Uh, sometimes I'm in the gym, so I want you to come, uh, you know, by this time. But with this guy, they never get a permission from Jesus. Because Jesus is not a human doctor, like a, like a doctor that we see here and there. What they do is, without getting an appointment, they bring down their sick person. And Jesus, he saw that sick person, and then he told him, rise up. Jesus restored his health. No man have done for me. Yes, surely, Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Still today heals. Jesus healed today. I believe, I, I strongly believe that God gave a wisdom for the doctors. I strongly believe that medicines are from God. But at the same time, I believe also God heals in a divine way. God has healed me. I am a living testimony. When I say God is a healer, I have, test, I have tested, I have seen it in my life. Just to, just to share with you. I had once I was playing soccer, and then I were, I were having the jersey of my friend. He has a skin, a skin allergy, and I got the skin allergy because of the jersey that I wear. Then I see it's getting bigger, it's getting bigger somewhere here. And then you know, I came, I came to my mom, and I told my mom, uh, I want, like, like, you, you see this thing, like, I, I have some skin allergy. Uh, what can I do? And she told me, Hey, son, go to the hospital. I mean, you, you are on duty. Why you come and talk to me like this? Go and you know, and. And I said, oh, okay, ma. And I, I, then I, I went back to my room, and then I said, okay, God, you have to heal me. Because I have read in the Bible that as you are a healer. 
then what I've done is I pray over the uh, oil, and then I put the oil here, and then I pray it over it, and then the next morning when I wake up, God is my witness, since from that morning onwards, I don't have any skin allergy. Jesus heals even today. For me, he is surely the Son of God. He is surely a healer. A healer of a soul, a healer of our physical body even. And also, in Matthew chapter 8, we see such an amazing thing. This official, a centurion, or official, call it whatever, his son is sick back at home, and then he came and he told him that, hey, <coughs> sir, hey, teacher, my son is going to die. He is so sick, I want you to heal him. And, and Jesus, and then what he, when he tried to go to his house, and he said, you know, Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. What you have to do is speak the word. And my son, who's in the bed, my son who's in the house, is going to be healed. And Jesus, so amazed by the faith of this God, and he said, I have seen such a face in all Judah. And then he spake the word. But the moment that speak, I think, as the Bible, as the Bible says, by the moment that he speaks, his son got him as as his son. Unless surely he is the son of God, his word never healed others. He never touched. He just stand here, far away. He speak a word, and then far away, someone, some kid, some young man, he just got healed. Why? Because. This guy who's talking here was truly the Son of God. Jesus is here even today. What is my reason why Jesus is surely the Son of God? Is because he rose the dead. He rose the dead. No one has done it. Razalas, for four days he was in the grave. He was dead, and people were, as of the culture of uh, Israelites, after three days they conclude their, uh, their um, mourning. After three days, Jesus came to their place, to Martha and Mary place, and says, I want to see Lazarus. Where is Lazarus? Prior to that, they sent a message saying, Jesus, you friend, Lazarus is sick, come, we know that you are a healer, come and heal him. He takes a time, because God is a God of time. He makes things beautiful in his own time. So he came on the right time, not as of our time calculation, but as his own time calculation. He comes and he says, where is Lazarus? I'm making you short the story. And then he said, he went, to, he went to the graveyard and then he started calling, Lazarus, wake up! Lazarus, rise up! Guess what happened? Lazarus, did he refuse? <laughs> oh, Jesus, never, never, never. I'm already dead. I don't want you. I'm enjoying my life. Never. What he did is, where he's dead, he's not even a, in a situation of, you know, like speaking a word, he's just dead. He's decaying on the process of decay. When the word of my Jesus comes, what he did is the dead thing start hearing Jesus. The dead Lazarus start hearing Jesus. And then he just start rising up. And as you know, in Ethiopia, and as well as in, uh, in Judah, in Israel, what they do is when someone died, they roll his leg, his arm, or something. You know, they do those fashions. He was in that situation. When he told him, Jesus, rise up, he rise up. The dead. <laughs> this is not zombie. This is Lazarus. He's jumping, and he says, you know, Jesus told them to undo the ties, and they undo the ties, and he started walking, he started living the life, 
he starts praising God, he starts walking and breathing in and out, he starts eating, he starts drinking, he starts fellowship 